I'm just going to ask uh, Melody, do you mind telling us a little bit more about So Science and what you do and how you do it? Sure. So, so Science is basically a social enterprise, and we are specialized in what we call responsible research and innovation, which is basically how you can use science, research, and technology in order to answer uh, social and environmental uh, issues. And we are convinced that in order to do that, you really need to give access to science uh, and to technical capabilities to a lot of people that actually cannot access them today. So what we do is that we create uh, open innovation programs around specific themes, specific social or environmental issues. And around that team, what we do is that we connect uh, and gather together uh, social entrepreneurs, NGOs, associations, but also scientists, industrials, startups. And the idea is to create collaboration, to use all the knowledge of all these people, uh, and to support them in basically finding solutions, new solutions, innovative solutions, in order to solve social or environmental um, issues. Oh, thank you. Bertrand, welcome back. I know that you, it's going to be a little bit of a flying visit because you, I know you've got another appointment as well immediately after this. So we're going to extract as much as we can from you in the little bit of time that we've got. Uh, can you, for those people who may not have been here in your session this morning, do you mind explaining a little bit more about what you're doing at Solar Impulse? Yes, with pleasure. Well, this morning at my keynote, I gave the point of view of the explorer. What has become Solar Impulse to identify 1,000 solutions, technologies, uh, systems, devices, product, materials that can protect the environment in a profitable way. Right now, I'd like to give the other angle of view because I'm also a medical doctor and I'm a psychiatrist. And what I understood from the human nature is that nobody is keen to change anything in his life anything in his certitudes or habits, if he is not obliged to do it, or if he doesn't find a personal interest in doing so. And this is why we think that the personal interest to change has to match with the needs of our world. So if you speak about protection of the environment, to the industry, and to the people who have 50,000 salaries to pay at the end of the month, they won't listen too much because they have other urgencies. But if you speak about how to make money, how to create jobs with solutions that can protect the environment, they will listen to you. And I think this is what is happening today. This is what makes companies move. And you have pioneers like Nestlé, like Perrier, and others who have understood that the business of the future is linked to the protection of the environment. But you have companies who are not leaders, who are not pioneers. You have people who are too selfish to care about the environment and about the future of humankind. And these people tend to resist. Of course, they are not in this room. They don't care about what we do. And these people have to be obliged by regulations to change. And in order to make regulations more adapted to the technologies and the solutions of today, we are also at the Solar Impulse Foundation working a lot with governments, with regulators, with public authorities, parliamentarians, to show them how to adapt the regulation to the modern technologies. So basically, you here with new clean technologies, you are at the center of what the world needs to make profit in the industry and to motivate the governments to adopt much more ambitious environmental targets and energy policies. Fabulous. And you've alluded to, to something in there in terms of, I mean, you alluded to it through the government, but this idea of sort of collaborating, it's not a single organization can just kind of go, da, 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 off we go, and we're going to make that transformation. What do you think the role of collaboration is in being able to bring new packages out into the world? 
Don't all rush at once. <laughs> what, what I tried to explain earlier is, is that in a lot of, there's a lot of people and organizations and startups who are working very often a little bit in isolation. So wh what we believe is that grouping these people together and making sure that they are sharing ideas, maybe that's the missing link. So we are not pretending uh, with this program that will solve all the issues of the world, not at all, but uh, it, it's, a little, it's a lot about the mindset and, and discussing with the, the, the winners today, what they were mentioning is that during the, that meetup day, even if they didn't have a lot of time, they had a lot of things to tell to each other uh, and there was a lot of ideas and there were a lot of collaborations that were born in only one day of meeting. So, can you imagine how much we could do if we continue like that and if more people are doing that? So that's really the, 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 the spirit of, of what we're trying to do here. And uh, Melanie, in terms of So Science's integration with the program, how does that work for you? What, what's your role? To, what, do you, what are you guys bringing? Is it the scientists? So basically what we are trying to do is to foster this kind of collaboration that would not happen. Um, the, the, the kind of issues that we are dealing with, uh, for example, here, um, packaging, but it's the same with uh, food waste, it's the same with energy. With, with a lot of issues, it is so complex and it's also so, so huge that it's impossible for one player alone to solve the issue. Um, you need, of course, states to be involved. You need companies to do what they have to do. You need citizens to act, you need startups, you really need everyone in this. But it's very hard for different groups of people to actually collaborate. So what we do is that we launch um, what we call open innovation programs and it's basically we ask a question to anyone in the world. It's very international and as you saw we have some winners that are not coming from, from France or not coming from Europe. Um, and so we ask this question and then we see who wants to answer in the whole world. We select uh, 30 to 50 participants and uh, as Philippe was saying, they meet during a one day meetup uh, where they create collaboration. And it's a very productive day. Um, but then of course, following that day, you have to support the collaboration that emerged. And that's basically what's starting right now with this program. And uh, so science will, will of course um, help uh, the winners uh, in getting even more support uh, in order to develop their ideas. Um, and it's of course scientific support, but it's also financing, it's also mentorship, etc. Bertrand, you are not new to this game <laughs> at all. And, and so in terms of collaboration, you know, you've, you've recently launched your label that you, you know, we spoke about earlier on today. Do you, can you speak a little bit more about the role of, of government and other organizations? How important is it that organizations who are, who are behind change are coming together? Well, of course, it's important that they come together, but it depends for what they come together. Because in the last hundred years, a lot of people came together and destroyed the environment and destroyed the planet. So the collaboration is just the reflect of the way people should think in a good way, otherwise it's useless. So what I would like to emphasize, which is very, very positive, is that five years ago, it would have been impossible to have a big company like Perrier on stage here telling spontaneously, we want to change, and we are calling for solutions to help us to change. This was impossible to obtain. Here, you would have had only green activists who would have said, the big companies are all bad, they're destroying the planet, and we have to fight against them. So you imagine the path that we have done. Today, it's not anymore about wishful thinking. It's about politicians sometimes, big companies sometimes, who are really involved, who are completely committed to change what does not go well in order to bring another type of product to the market, another type of economy, to, to involve the consumer because this is really important. When we speak of collaboration, it's not only big company and solutions. 
It's also how to involve the consumer to support the change. Otherwise, it will never work. So we, we have now the possibility to do more with the big companies. The big companies are having a leadership, but not all of them are doing well. But if Nestle and Perrier can do something well, it means that all the companies who are in the same field could do it also. And this is a, region, uh, this is a reason to collaborate with regulators and governments to push the one who resists to adopt the good behavior of the pioneers. So what you do at Perrier is remarkable. What is done by other leaders in the business is remarkable when you see that banks are now stopping to invest in polluting companies in order to divert their investment into clean technologies and renewables, it shows that it's possible. Now, the next step is to generalize this good practice to everyone. And I think something extremely important in what you just said is what the end game and what Perry dared to do with this program is to start with the intention that basically was how can we have a positive impact with this program. And, the, and as you said, it's something that honestly five years ago was impossible. So it's, it's really a good, a good thing and a good start. And, and I think that's what's important as well is to encourage, uh, you know, young startups. I mean, most of the projects we, we have uh, chosen for are projects that are largely in their infancy. And uh, so maybe the three of them will, will work and, 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 and will be able to have things hitting the market, some maybe qu quicker than others. Um, but we, I think it's important to also promote this uh, beyond everything that we do on top of that in order to make sure that we are creating new possibilities. Philippe, what do you think other big brands could learn from this program? Uh, the first thing they could learn is to meet Melanie and the team. Thank um, you. No, but on honestly, I think that we, we've met uh, more than a, a company we're working with. They are real partners because, I mean, let's face reality, we are no expert in that type of transformation and, and we really need support. And, uh, and I think that over the, let's say, nine, ten months we've worked together, close to a year maybe now, um, we've really created something strong. And what they brought to us is a different way to look at uh, issues and at problems and at opportunities. So I, I think that what other big brands can learn from that is, you know, that might uh, be a bit scary the, the first time you look at it. Um, but actually, I think we uh, come back with uh, being stronger and, 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 and I hope we'll become better and the business will become better as well. Fabulous. I'm just doing a quick time track. Bertrand, have you still got time? Are we still good? The team have disappeared. Five, Five minutes. minutes. Okay. okay, super. So we're going to go straight back to you. I just want to make sure that I'm not overstepping the boundaries. Um, what do you think are the biggest challenges that come with these sorts of programs? Because they're great to get out there and, and um, find and support organizations who are coming up with new packagings and solutions. But from your perspective, what can you see maybe some of the challenges that, to be aware of? Well, the end goal, to be really clear, is to save humankind from a threat of having a miserable quality of life in the future. This is really what is at stake. And if we want to solve this big challenge for humankind, we need to implement solutions very, very quickly. So either we work on everything simultaneously and we implement every solution and we find every opportunity to do better or the situation will get worse and worse and worse so this is really what's at stake so all the people who don't participate to this common effort are people who endanger us and not only the next generation but even today even today there are so many missed opportunities just to give you an example, we're in a world that is creating so much inequalities that it becomes really dangerous. We're in a world that destroys biodiversity, that wastes natural resources, that use old and polluting sources of energy. 
which creates 8, 000, sorry, 8 million deaths per year just due to air quality. So we, we really have to, to see the urgency of the problem. Then the way to solve it, of course, is to call all our certitudes into question. And each time we can encourage these changes, we have to do it, but on a massive scale, really on a massive scale. And today, things are not going fast enough, and the scale is too small. So we have to use a, a panel like this one to show that it is possible that the solutions exist on our side, our side on the Solar Impulse Foundation. We have already identified 353 solutions that protect the environment in a profitable way. So don't believe people who say it's expensive. Don't believe people who say there are no solutions. Don't believe people who say we're doing enough. Don't believe people who say the problem is not really urgent. And if you do it like this, we'll have a hope and we can really do it. But otherwise, we won't be able to do it and, and it will be a disaster. Thank you so much for that. Ladies and gentlemen, can you please give a hand to Bertrand because I know you need to rush off. And um, thank you very much. We're going to continue the panel. Merci beaucoup, Bertrand. Merci beaucoup. Au revoir. Um, so I want to pick up on something that uh, Bertrand said right there because the program you've created effectively allows an acceleration in how quickly you're able to bring materials through um, new materials and, and new ideas to life. Just in case somebody was in here thinking, oh, this sounds really interesting, how does, how does one get involved? So if somebody is interested in the solution, so what, what, we are, what we are trying to do here is to accelerate these projects in the, in the first steps of, of, of these projects. The way we've designed it, as Melanie was saying, is an open innovation principle. So open innovation is about making sure that people meet with each other and are sharing. Then there could be questions on uh, will it be, uh, how far will you go and do you want to do that fully open source? And the answer to that is there's no answer to this at that stage. One, because we are learning. Two, because the projects we are talking about are very different in nature. Uh, so, for example, in the case of FlexiKeg, the, 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 the solution already starts to exist uh, in, the, in the beer world. Uh, there's first thing starting next Monday, I heard. So, uh, so it's, it's very fresh, but it is starting. So, so then it's a discussion that we'll have uh, between FlexiKeg and, and ourselves. So we, we are here to try to accelerate. Uh, and we want, at the end, uh, to make sure that what we do can provide benefits to us, obviously, but the way we frame the program is also for the total beverages. So if ultimately what we do and some of the outcomes of what we do can be benefit to the whole beverages world, we'll be very happy. That's the mindset we have behind it. And I think it really comes back to the, yeah, the mindset, as you were saying, the spirit of the program. The, when the intention is to save humankind, as was saying Bertrand, uh, it, it really changes how you look uh, at your actions and at what you are doing. Um, and so the, the main goal here is to have as many people as possible benefiting from the solutions. Uh, and the way to do that, I mean, it's only practicalities, and it's something that we will have to design and to discuss and to do in our best way possible. Uh, but the, the, the true spirit, the true mindset is to find a solution that can be really useful for, as you said, the whole beverage industry. And how, um, what's in it for the organizations that take part? So. The, you know, you've got experts, you've got financing, you've got the backing of parents, you know, what kinds of things, you know, in terms of acceleration on a real practical level, what can organizations who take part in the program expect? So in terms of uh, support, uh, what the, the, the winners will uh, have access to is actually a um, follow-up program. Uh, of a minimum of uh, six months, uh, and uh, if needed, it could be more. Um, and in this program, they will have access to um, mentors, basically, to trainings, 
uh, we will try to connect them uh, to give them visibility. So it's, it's really a, a lot of different things. It's also very uh, designed for the different uh, winners. So not everyone needs the same thing. So it's, it's very uh, specifically designed for them. Um, and of course, there is also the financing part. Um, if needed, we will try to help them uh, find new funds. Uh, and then there is the part also that uh, Perrier is, is giving. So it's both technical help uh, and also finance. And, and the last thing probably is to, uh, to maybe give a podium to these, uh, to, to these companies or to, or to these projects. Uh, so that's why we felt it was very important that they are with us today and that we talk about them because they are the re real heroes of change, much more than us. So. So that's why it was so important. So making sure that uh, people get to hear about the great ideas that they have. And what stage are these businesses at? Are we talking like brand new, like from idea, or are they further along? They've already got some funding. Are there um, criteria around what stage of growth an organization needs to be at in order to take part in this sort of collaboration? So we, we prefer to, to take collaborations with, with people and companies who are really at the start, uh, we, we need that help in order to, uh, you know, to get things right and to make sure that uh, we can help them technically as well because there's a whole load of technical experts that they can uh, tap into uh, so that the project can become viable and then scalable. So th this idea of trying to, uh, you know, to make the first steps together and, and, and then uh, continue to work together and why not let them go to uh, other areas is, is really the way we want to look at it because we feel that it's the best moment and how we can help them most. And, and this is extremely important because as we know these issues are huge um, but today we do not know a, a solution that is really at the scale needed and at the same time, if you don't invest and if you don't support the small ones, the, the ones that are just being created, then it's impossible that you find something that is already uh, at scale. So it's really important that uh, big players uh, like Perrier or like Nestle can actually support these kind of, uh, of innovations. And, and just to add on that, Nestle is already making a lot of commitments on what we will do, the introduction of RPE into our products and all that. So we've got all this uh, which is taken care of in a way. So something we all do and we are committing to do and Perrier as part of Nestle will do that. Uh, so the intention here is to do other things uh, to, to maybe to bring those new ideas to life and, and so that uh, they can become big ideas for the future. We've talked about it a little bit today, and um, Bertrand really kind of focused on it, the commercial viability of an idea. Because especially when you're in that early stage where it's fresh and it's exciting, and of course we should be able to take this material and, or create something new out of a material that we haven't thought about. How do you support with working out where those, you know, the, the great idea and the commercial viability have that nice segue? So this is really, first, it's, uh, as, as was said, very beginning ideas. So it's not the first thing we will be looking at because you don't want to kill ideas mm. based on that. Uh, but of course, it's something that will be worked with, uh, with these uh, players, with these winners. Um, because as was said just before, uh, it's extremely difficult to transition if you cannot also at the same time show that there are some solutions that are viable on an economic point of view. And so it's really something that we will uh, aim for. And there are a lot now of, of different new business models, uh, mainly designed by social companies, social entrepreneurs, that we can try. Uh, and of course, we will support uh, the, the winners in, in trying these kind of models in order to become viable. It's, it's one of the goals. Uh, but it's not the first conversation, of course. Yeah, what was important for us probably is the potential we see for them to be, to be viable and scalable. And, and then we'll see how it goes because it's, it's too early to say, but having seen that potential was critical in the choice. So it, it focused predominantly on the idea initially, and then as that develops and blossoms, 
then switching to looking more, more at something more commercially viable. Um, Melanie, you said something really interesting there about different types of business models that you've seen that have worked before. Can you share a little bit more? Now I'm curious. Well, actually, it's a very interesting conversation because it's the whole thing about what is a social company, what is a social enterprise. And it's basically a company that's, whose first goal is to answer social and environmental issues um, and whose of course, is viable, economically speaking, has a business model, but it's not the first thing they're looking for. Uh, basically, so science is a social company. So everything we do has to have a purpose, a social or environmental impact. Um, but we did not create it, this company just for profit, in a sense. Um, and then in doing that, of course, you have very different uh, business models to have some sort of impact. You have um, the classic one, which is a buy one, give one, for example. Um, but there are a lot of opportunities to explore, and it's something uh, we will, of course, explore with the potential solution if they want to. Philip, I've got an... Don't, don't, I'm going to sit back a little bit before I ask this question in case, uh, in case you decide to leap out of your chair and get come for me. I'm getting prepared. You're, you're getting prepared? Yeah. Um, how close am I? I there's a good <laughs> exit that way. Um, one could look at some, uh, an organization like Nestle and um, Perrier and say, well, you know, is this just ticking the box of corporate social responsibility? What is it, how do brands take this idea of really wanting to do good and embed it in the organization to support? What makes Perrier and Nestle different in the way that they're approaching this? So what I've alluded to in, uh, in my keynote speech was this history of collaboration. So that's, that's one thing. We feel it's really part of our DNA. But on, on this specific topic, uh, wh what is really crucial is we realized that on a brand like Perrier, that is the number one sparkling water in the world, and the, the, the needs of our consumers and what consumers were expecting beyond what we want to do is, is really to make sure that we develop business in a susti sustainable manner. So that it's really important for consumers to make sure that they feel that Perrier is taking that seriously, is willing to m help make a change, and is willing to take steps that go into the right directions. So we, we, we came to understand that, and then we thought about how we want to do that, and, and this is what came up, uh, we, which we believe is really in line with the DNA of our brand, and which can also bring some real concrete benefits uh, for a brighter future. So you, you really did bring it back to what your cu customers are looking for? Yeah, clearly. I mean, at, at the end, I mean, Bertrand was saying that as well. Uh, it, it's really important. So we, we are doing business, and we are trying to please consumers every day. So we need to make sure that what we do is done in the right way, in a sustainable way, in order to develop the brand in the long term. That's what we are, we are paid for. And, but we don't do that at all you know, as a greenwashing exercise. We do that because we truly believe that there's something in there. Um, we are part of the problem, in a way, because we are selling sparkling water. So to what degree and how can we be part of the solution? And we are part of the solution through the fact that we are you know, delivering on the Nestle commitments and we are delivering as well through that project another way, a new fresh way to look at things which we hope will work. Do you think that the large, as well as, um, I'm loving this program, you're bringing lots of small organizations together. Do you think the large brands should be getting together and having a similar sort of conversation? Should, should the collaboration be also between you and maybe some of your... Um, dare I say, competition. So we are doing that in some instances. So we are collaborating in order to develop some new materials. So, so that's not really the topic for today. So that's not the part that I, that I wanted to talk the most of. But uh, there's a lot of work that is taking place at the moment in order to make sure that we are finding ways to improve, collect, improve collection because PET, PET is an amazing material provided. It is collected and recycled in the right way. And the, the, the number one issue is really collection. So there's uh, things in that area on new material as well. Uh, so there's a lot that is being done already. 
And, and, and you know what? If, if in order to, for this initiative to become bigger, uh, we can have discussions with other brands, also competitions. I mean, why not? Let's, let's have a discussion about that because the, 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 the more we are, the bigger we are likely to be and the, the, the more chances some of the solutions are likely to, uh, to, to go uh, a long way. I'm loving that you're so open to moving things, like helping to build a lot of momentum. Melanie, I can see you chomping yeah. at the bit. Yeah, yeah, because I think it, it really goes back to the intention because at, at, when you decide to do something for the planet, for the environment, then of course you have to be able to collaborate with also uh, the competitors, with actually the whole sector, because it's not a problem of like just Perrier. Or it's not the problem of one brand, it's not the problem of one company. It's actually something everyone has to work on uh, and has to collaborate on in order to move forward. So. Um, I think it really goes back to that. When you decide to do something this huge, this important, and for these good reasons, uh, then it becomes more natural to, to go also to people you would not have to, maybe. What is the big ambition for the program over the next five years? So we want to have some concrete things happening in the market by 2025. So that's the objective we set to ourselves. Ideally, we would like to have things happening already in 2021, probably the time for everything to take place. So if we could have a first proof in the market in 2021, that would be already a great uh, achievement. And then if at the end, by in, in, the in five years from now, there's more competitors, why not, joining and some of these solutions are getting real scale. So what is real scale is difficult to define because the projects are so different. Uh, so getting projects that uh, are to, to a certain scale would be so something uh, we would be very proud of. And Melanie, what, from your perspective, what, what's your ambition for the program over the next five years? Uh, well, I would agree on that, that if one of the solutions can be big enough, viable enough, interesting enough to be on the market uh, in, in 2025. And if we can have, for example, Perrier sell the, uh, in, in keg, uh, that would be extremely interesting. That would be something I think we have never seen before. Um, and so, yeah, that would be a, a great success. And then, of course, something that is even beyond that is for other brands, other uh, big group to see how just by taking a different approach to these huge problems, you can actually uh, uh, engage much more people around you and you can act actually have much more help in dealing with these issues. Um, and it's somehow your responsibility to open up to these kind of possibilities. That would be a, a major success. To see that it's been a step change in how organizations, broadly speaking, start looking at things and working more collaboratively together. Absolutely. I think we are, yep, we are out of time. Um, ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together and give an incredible warm round of applause to Philippe and Melanie.